to wasting technology today we're going to be talking about bitwise conversion of binary to decimal or to an um, integer which is um, in base 10 so that's what we're going to be doing today to convert binary to decimal so in this um Perhaps because we have other approaches of solving this, we are not making use of this percentage sign, which is also known as a mode or modulus, um, used to give you the remainder. We are not making use of that. Uh, we are also not making use of this division sign. We are not making use of that in this class. So we are mainly functioning, focusing on bitwise. So we are to convert because. Uh, um, you check my previous class, we made mention of um, the NOR, OR gate, and all that. We also make mention of conversion from binary to hexadecimal, from hexadecimal to decimal, and um, to binary, and that's it. We have been doing that a long, 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 long term. So, in this one, um, we are going to be doing tag zero, which is <coughs> binary to you int so that's what we're going to be talking about today so in this i'm not going to be writing or creating more files but i'm going to be specializing on just one file which is going to be very important for this course uh, actually i don't want to be including or compiling the header and other stuff together but i'm just working just mainly on one file so let's get started so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a file called um i'm think of a name to give it um let me say binary uh let me call it binary binary to let me use an underscore binary to int your int like that so dot c so that's the name of the function and, and the name of the file so this is the name of the file we are going to be using binary to unit.c so we're going to be opening that in vim so this is a new file so the first thing i'm going to do is to save that file uh, by using uh, on that and hit that so it has been saved so the first thing we're going to be doing is, is going to include our file sorry in set mode so I want to include a library that we're going to be using. So there's the common library uh, we always use. Where you can add other library like standf.h. But I'm just going to add this in case there is a need for that. We include that later on discuss. So we have um, stdio.h like that. Then we're going to hand that. So, uh, I will be explaining each line of code so you know why we are using each line of code. So, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be adding any, um, what's it called, uh, comments. So, you add those comments yourself based on time, reason, so we'll be able to get what we want to get. And that is all. So, in the function, first of all, we need to check what the user is providing as an input uh, we want to check that but before we go into that okay let's check that first then we do other stuff so we want to check what the user is giving us as uh, output we want to get that that's the most important thing so um the, we're going to create a function called check so that's the name of the function so I'm going to create a function called check and that function will be returning an integer. So I start with an int because it's going to be returning a number either 1 or 0. So that's the purpose of that. So that is going to be returning for us. So I'm just going to call the name of the function check. So I just hit there and hit enter. So uh, put our curly braces because it's gonna contain a block of code so um, I come inside here because this check is gonna be checking for something so I'm gonna add a parameter 
of what it's going to be checking. So it's going to be checking a constant, uh, a constant variable, a constant variable. So because uh, I put constant like that. So what constant simply does is it's going to check if uh, anybody wants to make an alteration or want to alter uh, the value of that thing with something else. I want to set it to something else. So it's going to throw an error. So we don't want anybody to be able to alter any value there. So what is it going to be receiving? Um, actually, if we use an integer like this, that means um, we must make sure or uh, we must surely make use of this percentage sign and the slash sign, which I said that we are not going to be making use of. So we want to be working with characters, we want to manipulate characters, we want to see each characters. Um, so uh, I'm just going to put chr because we are be getting characters from the user. And um, that variable or data type has um, a declaration of b. So inside the parameter, so b, so we are receiving a, a value of b which is going to be checked later on to see if it meets the requirement. So this check function will check if the, it meets the requirement. And if it meets the requirement, it's going to return one. But if the requirements are not up to the standard, are not met, then it's going to return zero. So what's the first thing we want to check? We want to check if um, whatever the user is providing to us contains a value whatever the user is providing to us contains the value. So a user might not submit an empty string. A user might not submit an empty string to us. So we just leave B. For instance, we have, when I'm talking about an empty string, I mean something like this. Uh, um, just nothing. Just close it. Nothing is provided. So the user will not provide empty string or uh, something like this. I think this should be a good idea. Uh -huh. So something like this. Nothing is provided inside here. So that will be a very big error. So we want to make sure that the user provides something for us. Something tangible we can make use of. So we're going to use an if statement to check that. So the if statement is checking the B to confirm if it is not empty. So I'll put B is um equals to equals to null so null means nothing is provided when you run this uh if your um, b is empty what happens is it returns an empty um terminal for you when you are running your code nothing appears so whenever um whatever value there returned is zero and or nothing is provided i want it to return a zero for us so it's going to be returning a zero to the user so nothing inside there to make use of so now i don't need to put a coily braces or something like this this i need to put this stuff there why because it's only one line of code if b is null then return zero that means if b is empty if this b here is empty then you should return zero so you don't need uh, 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 a coily braces because it's just a single statement um, uh, or a simple sentence so that's it so uh, I'm just gonna hit enter then I'm gonna have checked if it is empty so it's gonna return zero so if anybody provides a null value zero is gonna be dropped to rush so the next thing I'm going to be checking is while loop. So while like uh, uh, while loop. So uh, why I put this while loop? I want to be looping through each um, value provided by the user to see if a certain condition is true. So I'm going to be using a while loop here uh, like this. So inside my while loop, I write a bunch of stuff. So I need to add. Uh, What's it called? I need to add uh, I need to add something like 
um, a coily braces which is this coily braces I added there so it needs to be added because I'm gonna be writing a bunch of stuff in there so the first thing is I want to check when you loop through each um, um, syntax or you loop through each individual stuff we have there I want you to check if if B like this so you see I use the B value now why I'm using this because I'm 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 I'm, I'm comparing something I'm checking if something is true or false so I'm able to use this but I can't use that for B ordinary B without putting this because it seems as if I want to assign something to it so I'm not assigning anything to it this value so this is checking the main value. This is like a, the reference, um, the, the reference format. All those B that have stars are the, the reference format. So it's gonna give us the real output. So I want to check for something. So uh, to check for something like if the value there um, is not equal to is not equals to so that's a symbol for it's not equals to one because that one is going to be in a string format one like this when looping and again it's not also equals to the reference format is not also equals to zero then I want something to happen now you get to see this so uh, I want it to return zero if that condition is not true so now let's explain that to see so I'm gonna shrink this a little bit so you see so if this is not equal to one that means you know in binary binary numbers contains only one and zero so we don't expect to see any other value apart from one and zero so if um, we don't have one there and we don't have uh, zero there inside it then you are looking through each value of the um, of the string and we don't have one and zero there inside it at least one or at least zero please I want you to return zero to um, the distance because we need to see one and zero in it so even though we are looking through it and we encounter any of the value that is not either one or it is not what zero I want you to return zero to the user so I'll put the B plus plus sign so that it loops well uh, to check that so it's going to return zero in case it encounters any of this else if we not put this line of course it's going to loop for eternity <laughs> you see a uh, everlasting loop <laughs> so so if any of this um, here does not work out well then I want something else to happen I want it to return one so to return one so let me put that one in a bracket because that's a good practice so like that so it's gonna return one so that's for the check function so it's checking to see if um, I provide the right value so uh, I'm gonna call in my uh, main function here so I will put the int main to check if to see if it works properly uh, I'm going to put that here and yeah like that so you can see that so come over here and add void oh shit So like that and it's settled. 
now I, I want to check to see if that function really works so I was gonna put uh, print f print f so uh, so I'm gonna put the function there which is check Is it checked or check? So I'm just gonna put a B there. So constant char then a pointer B so so I'll be using that to be checking to see so I'm, I'm just gonna put a percentage there percentage B sorry D like that to see if I'm missing any stuff uh, Return zero like that. So I'm gonna escape that and I'm gonna save so you see what I have done there. So the next thing is I'm gonna quit. So I'll I'll just GCC this to see if it works or I've written any error. Okay, um, oh, my header file, I included a wrong header file, stdii instead of stdio.h. So I'm gonna rectify it in a moment. So just go to this place to rectify that. So I just hit R. To replace that with O, and that's it. So, so uh, another error um, expected. Oh, I didn't end that. Oh, so let me go ahead and put that in there. So stuff like that so I'm going to WQ that to check okay I think that works so let me clear my screen and run that to see e dot out so you see it returns zero for me it returns zero because um, the input there has met one of the errors, which is the while loop error, trying to tell you that what was in this place was um, we're supposed to see one, and we're supposed to see what zero, but in this situation we encountered in B B what one two and three you can see that so if I come over here and replace that with um, zero and replace that with uh, zero oh sorry with zero like that so we have one zero zero so if I save and quit and compile it again so if I run that uh, 
you can see we have one here. You can see that is to say that the requirements met successfully. That means one um, means that yes, thumbs up, that's a good one. That means um, all the conditions there that was given was met. So all the negativity there was not working out. So um, the negativity there, which is number one, um, being null, another negativity which is what um, receiving any value that is not either one or zero. So all these checks with runs false. So because of all these run false, the next thing that needs to run is this line of code which is return one and it returns one to us and simply what does one means uh, if you want to check what one run one means in if statement one simply stands for true and zero stands for false so you want to get that so uh, um, we have checked this i'm just gonna get rid of this i'm gonna delete uh two lines okay delete so I'll come over here. Uh, good. So I'm gonna return zero like that. So you want, want to confirm what one and what zero means. So I'm gonna write an if statement. An if statement, and inside that if statement, I'm just gonna pass one inside. Then I'm just I'll I'll I will I'll put something like this curly braces inside this curly braces uh, return um, I want it to print out to so it's gonna print out stuff on the screen um, so to print out stuff on the screen uh, I'll just put true there C R U E true like that and I'll come here and put that stuff there else if anything wrong or that condition is not good then I want this other one to work out so I'll just copy this and paste it here Good. So I'll just change this to a false. So like that. So if you want to know how to use um on Veeam, I have tutorials on that which you can go and learn. Um, maybe after this course, I'm gonna, um, I'll make sure I upload that and drop the link so you get access to that. So now you see if is one, so I want this to be printed out on the screen. So let's see how that works. So I'm just gonna uh, save and quit. Then I'm gonna just see that. Then I'm going to run that so just put uh, something like that a dot out so there's that you can see it returns what true can you see that it returns true so that's why that checking is very important it returns true but if for instance i i go in there and change this value where i have one and I replace it with zero like that and I quit that and compile it and run it you see we have what so you can see that so it's either returning one or returning zero which we're going to be using in the next function so the next function is the main function so I'm gonna cd inside that oh sorry what am i doing i'm gonna vi inside that function uh, because that's what we're gonna be making use of 
okay good so now um going to get rid of this so delete how many lines one two three four five six so i want to delete six lines delete six lines good so that is that for the um main function so the next thing we're going to be doing is i will enter to the next line i will enter to the next line then in the next line i'm going to be writing a code that we're going to be using so that is that for the other part of it so i'm gonna I'm, we are done with the checking. So the next thing we're going to be doing is writing the main function. We're going to, to execute the other function. So I will just come in there. So this other function is what does the conversion. So I'm going to call the conversion. So I use unsign like that, unsign. And I add an ed there. So unsign simply means that... Um, um, this is going to be re returning positive numbers, uh, positive numbers. So um, we have we expect to see um, 10, 5, 6. So you know that in base 10, um, um, on binary, we don't have minus. So you can never say anything like minus 1, minus 2, uh, minus 3, or minus um, 0, or minus 1, 0, 0, 1. So you can't see something like that. So... That's why we use the unsigned. The unsigned is always used to return an integer that is positive valued. So we expect positive value. So we just have to use an int there. So a positive integer. So um, I'm just going to put the name of the function, which is going to be binary, uh, binary uh, underscore. So two, then there's the name of the function you int like that and i'm gonna put this so this year this will tell you or uh, this is going to be receiving based on the same thing that is checked in and we use on the check code is the same parameter that is going to be received here so uh we just go ahead and put the char sorry uh put the const for a constant so we are always receiving a character we'll put a chart there then uh, let me shrink this so you see it fully then um it's always a pointer b uh, so we should not forget that pointer is used to store address so um we get in there and hit enter so that's it and we are good to go so now we can be working with um, some stuff uh, uh, more stuff we want to be working with so we are good to go so now the next thing is um, in our function we want to add some stuff which we are going to be using um, in our project so the first thing we will be working with um, we know in a decimal we we, when we convert in a decimal, we work with um, one zeros and the power of two. So we have two, four, eight. Oh, sorry, one, two, four, eight, sixteen, uh, thirty-two, and sixty-four, and all that. So um, we need to create uh, a value or declare a variable and set it to zero, which is going to be storing that. So, uh, let me give, for example, um, we, have, we have 1 and 0, and like this. So, me having 1 and 0, and I want to convert this to decimal, you know, we're going to do 2, what, times, what, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, let me get rid of this. So, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 1 times 2, right? Then the next one is going to be what? 0 times 2. You can see that. So now you will notice that this will be what? 
to raise to the power of what? 0, which is going to be 1 times, I'm sorry, 0 times 1. Get rid of this. 0 times times 1. Because 2 raised to the power of 0 is 1. Y here is going to be raised to the power of 1. So we have 1 times what? Um, 2 raised to the power of 1 is still 2. So it's going to be adding it. So whatever calculation that occurs in each of these stage is added up. So we consider that as being a decimal. So whatever calculation that occurs where we have 1 times 2 raised to the power of whatever value is the decimal. So we're going to do the calculation of everything and it's going to be stored inside the decimal. The decimal variable we just created. So um, let's continue. So the next thing we're going to be doing is um, I'm waiting for that to come up. Okay, so we have that coming up. So um, the next thing we're going to be doing is um, integer, uh, integer. So sorry, int insert mode. So inside that, I'm going to be putting the unsigned. I told you what unsigned template is used for. Unsigned int. So I'm going to call the name decimal like that. So we're going to be setting that to uh, zero. Sorry. Yeah. Zero. So it's going to be adding up later on in this cost of coding. So the next thing is, um, I'm going to also declare another integer. I'll call it string length. Length. So I'm still going to set this to uh, zero. Sorry, like that. So let me tell you what string length is. String length simply, this is the function that we are going to use to store the number of, um, we are going to use it to store the number of um, string we provide. For instance, um, if we, we provide like 10011, it's going to return um, how many um, value we have here. If we count it, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to return 5. If we store um, 111 like this, so 111, that is how many? 1, 2, 3. So it's going to return 3. So it's going to store the length of how many things that is there. So that's the function of the string length. So we are going to be storing the length of what we half there. So you, you understand what I'm talking about? So that's the function of the string length. The string length is used to store the um, um, value we provide, the number, the length of the value we have provided. So that's what the string length will be doing in our function. So we need that, very important. So the next thing is the base. So the base is what is increasing. The base is what is increasing. So if you have checked our previous course, you see I made mention of base 2 and how um, it's increasing. No, I'm going to create another course that's going to explain how to convert uh, from base 2 to base 10 um, using simple stuff like that with um, simple tricks which we can use to get that done. So I'm going to set the base to, sorry, 1. I'm going to set it to 1, like that. So now, let me explain what those base is. So for instance, um, like I made mention earlier, uh, let me uh, put that there, so you see what I'm trying to explain. So uh, in binary, um, we want to convert 1, 1 to um, a decimal. Um, we do 1 times what? 2 plus times another two. So this one is what? Zero. And this one is what? One. You get that? Right? Now, if I want to convert here, it will not be one times two raised to the power of zero is what? 
1 plus um, 2 raised to the power of 1 is what? 2 uh, times 1 is still 2. So when you add this, 1 times 2 is what? 1 times 2, which is this one, 1 times 2 is going to give us 2 plus 1 times 1 is going to give us 1. So we have 2 plus 1, which is going to give us 3. So this stands for 3 in decimal. Now, why we need the base is, you notice that um, everything we have here comes with an increment of 2. So for instance, we have 1, 1, 1, and this half 2 raised to the power of 0, this one half 2 raised to the power of 1, this one has 2 raised to the power of 2, like that, and they are multiplying themselves. When you are using it in the calculation, you notice that 2 raised to the power of 0 is what? 1. 2 raised to the power of 1 is what? 2. 2 raised to the power of 4 is what? 4. So the next one will be 2 raised to the power of what? 2 raised to the power of what? Uh, 3. 2 raised to the power of 3 is going to be 8. So you can see, so it's just like a multiple a multiplication of 2. So 1 times 2 is 2, times 2 again, 4, times 2, 8, times 2. So with this, I can easily... Um, go ahead and calculate stuff. Maybe something that looks more complicated, uh, a way complicated. So you can just come and do something like this. Uh, 1, 0, 1, 1. I want to convert this to um, base, um, base 10. I can start. I will know that the first number is what? 1. I'll add it up. with The next number is what? 2. The other number is what? 4. The next number here is what? 8. Now, this 1 times this 1 is going to give us what? 1 plus 1 times 2 is going to give us what? 2. 0 times 4 is going to give us what? 0. And 1 times 8 is going to give us what? It's going to give us 8. So if you add that, 8 plus 2 plus 1, that is going to give us what? I think this is 13. Or this is 11. Yeah, this is 11. Uh, yes. Sorry, lost there. So 8 plus 0 is 8 plus 2, 10 plus 1, that is 11. So that is going to give us 11. So you can see that. So that is how you can use without going through those rigors of doing 1 times 2 times. So you see it's increasing by 2. So this is where the function is very important. So, um, so this the function is very important. The base is important because this base will be increasing in a multiple of 2. So from 1 to 2 to uh, 4 to 8 and so on. So now we are going in to write the main function. So the first thing is we want to check um, if whatever that was there is um, um, whatever the value that was provided is good. So to do that is just to call our function we have created. So um, I'll check um, the name of the function. The name of the function is check. So I'll come here and apply that. So I'll, I'll, I'll now say that check. Sorry. Uh, so check. That's a function. I'll provide it with the value of b because b might be anything that is provided from this place. So I'm putting it here so I can provide like 3 or 111 or 110 or 1111 or 115. Whatever I provide here is going to be here. So it's going to check. This function is going to be running. So if the function here runs, and you know, I said that this function is returning either 1 or it's returning. 0. Either 1 or 0, that's what it's going to be returning. So, I tell you what 1 simply means. 1 simply means true, and um, 0 simply means false. Now, if this is true, then something should happen. But we are not going to be doing that. I'm going to put the exclamation mark, which, going to, which simply means not. If it is not this function, that means if it is not this that is running, um, actually, uh, we can still use that to um, complete the stuff or this thing. Um, okay, let me make things simple for us because I'm gonna I'm going out of 
this to make things more complicated so just for this sake of this teaching so you guys understanding so if this is true that means if it is one because whenever this is provided that means it is one so if this is true uh, I'm gonna put my coily braces sorry not that, not that programmer <laughs> I've tried to be not that programmer that puts there okay uh, come to this place because I love that a lot, especially when I'm dealing with JavaScript. I use that a lot, putting my curly braces from here. But, um, well, that's okay. Anyone, we have <laughs> all are still good. <laughs> they will still run your code probably. So, if this condition is true, then whatever code of blood I'm going to write here should run. Then, else, if this condition is not true, so I'm going to put here. Else, if the condition is not true, I want something to happen. So I want it to return zero. Return zero. If the condition is not true. So you can see that. So if the condition is okay, I want the code inside this if block to work. But if the condition is not okay, if it returns zero, that means it's not one, is zero, then I want the condition inside there to work. So I'm just doing it for simplicity. I can just put um, if not there and make things more complicated for us, but no, I'm not going to do that. Um, this tutorial is for the sake of understanding. So I want us to understand what we are doing here. So now the first thing I'm going to be doing is now that I have checked it out, now I want our codes to run. Our codes to run. So um, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I want to be getting the total length of everything we are doing. I want to be getting the total length. When I mean the total length, every damn thing. So I'm going to be using a while loop here. A while loop. So now this while loop, I'm gonna put B, and I'm gonna put this as an array. So this is gonna contain the string length, string length. Yeah, like that. So that is going to be containing the string length. So um, this string length is what we'll be working with. So the string length, I'm um, coming over here. Then I'm going to say if the string length is not equal to the last one, is not equal to the last um, to the last value. So how do we know what is the last value in a string? So to get the last value in a string is when you use this and I put a, a backslash then a zero, then you close it. So this is this symbolizes the last symbolizes ending of every string. So this is this when you put this, it simply means I want to get to the end of the string. So whenever this condition um, if this is not equal to this condition, then I want something else to happen. I want uh, you to go ahead and run what I'm going to put inside this while loop. So you got to understand that when I'm testing this. So for instance, we have while we have the string underscore length is not equal to the last value. I want you to keep on looping. So what am I looping at? I'm going to be increasing the string. So the string is going to be str um, underscore. G. G. Um, sorry. String length plus plus. 
So you can see that. So this is B. You know that inside B, um, let me use my pen so I can explain better. Now inside B, we should take note. This is a B. Now is an array of what characters. So I can provide one character, two character. So now if for instance we have one, one, zero, one, right? Now, we should take note that the first character, which is 1, means 0 in this array. Hmm? So, already, string length is already in 0. Now, the second one is what? Will be what? 1. You can see that. The third one, which is this, Will be two and the fourth one will be three then if for instance we have want to get the last element then it's very simple that will be the word fourth one so the fourth one will be this symbol that I show you which is this then um your slash zero or uh, this that I show you uh which um this stuff here so the fourth one in the array symbolizes this thing you see here you can see that so that's what that means so if for instance it has not getting to the last this thing this should keep on looping she keep on adding up till when it reached the particular place that it encountered this, I want it to what? To stop. So that is what this while function is going to be doing. It's going to be looping through a string now to get it. So um, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to test this code. So you see, so I'll just copy this code. Um, Okay, let me test that. Uh, so let me use a print F to check that out. So I'll be checking that code out. So let me use print F. Print F. So you can see. So what we want to be printing out are numbers. So I'll put a percentage sign there. Percentage D. So I'm doing this so that we know we know what is going on. I'll put a comma there. Then I'm gonna put string length. String. Length like, like that, so you can see that. So, this is the string length. So, I'm gonna close that there. So, I'm gonna place it here so you see how it's looping through each um, each value. You want to see how string is increasing. That means, you want to see how this value here, yeah, strl length, is gonna be increasing based on the number of what value I have imputed. So if for instance I come over here and sorry I come over there and me coming there I added um print f print f So I added print f. Now in this print f, I want to be. I'm going to use that function I uh, imputed there. So I will just put. Uh, okay, this is returning what? A number. Okay, good. Let me see what is returning. It's returning an integer, which is a number. So I just want to test this line of code to see 
how it works so instead of me to put that let me use a return keyword okay so i'm gonna return return a string like that i'm gonna change that later so let me get rid of this and put string length inside string underscore length so i'll just get rid of this and paste it over here So I'm placing it there. So it's going to return that. So we know the number of string we have get from the this thing. So I'm just going to put this. This here. So the int variable. So inside there I'm going to put a percentage. A percentage and a D. Then uh, put a new line, a new line. Then the percentage D is going to be from the function we created. What's of that function? Um, um, binary, binary underscore. So it's going to be binary underscore two underscore u int then inside it i'll be providing a character so the character i'm providing is going to be let me say one zero one 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 like that just to check to see if it works so I'm going to escape that. I don't know if I have any error here. So, so I'm going to save that quickly. And run that to see if there is an error. Okay. Okay, um, CH, what I put there, check, check, supposed to be CH, and what did I use, I put CHK, so that's the first error, so let me rectify that, so it's supposed to be CHK, yeah, so, uh, okay, let me compile it again to see, Okay, so uh, incompatible integer parameter type uh, char. Okay, so let me go and rectify that. If I use this. I don't know if it works. Yeah, that works. So let me go and check it out. So uh, run that. So you can see we have what for there because I provided what four strings in there. So we have four other outputs. You can see it here. Four is our output. So let me clear the screen. So I, I, I'm going to go back and vim inside that again. Then I'm going to add maybe extra one. Uh, one, sorry, two ought not to be there. 
0.1101 so based on the length of it so because we want to get the length so it's going to be returning the length to us so like that so when we check that again um gcc that and we, we run it you see we have nine there that is the length of what i have provided so that's that's for um to check the code so but that's not the aim of what we are doing we are not checking the length we want to convert to binary so that's what we want to do so um i'm going to remove this because i've gotten what i'm looking for so so string is the number of length that's provided so with this i can go up and add the next scene there what i want to add next so i just put while while string that means while a number is set means why it is four or five or ten or whatever it is why it is like that i want this line of code to run so why the string length have been set i want this code to run now take a note that if we don't if we put it like this it's going to run for infinity so we need to add something like str the string length and subtract it so we're going to be doing plus plus like that so you see i'm gonna escape that so me escaping that i'll check what i have in there um mm, sorry not adding it sorry supposed to subtract it so if it is four it's going to reduce it to zero and nothing else is going to happen so that is that for the this thing. So um, now this is where the main calculation comes in. Now I tell you that the decimal is the calculation of everything for each step. So now we're gonna create the other part of it. Uh, so okay, we, we we need to come to this place and we are going to do the main calculation. I want the E, uh, our, that is our decimal. I want to be adding it up whenever each calculation in each steps, in each stage have been made possible. So I want to be adding it up like that. So you can see, so it's still the same thing as saying um, and decimal is equals to decimal plus something else. So uh, this is a short format for it. So instead of doing this, decimal is equals to. Uh, decimal uh, decimal plus something like that or whatever so i'm doing this as a short form like that so you can see that so now you you see um i've added that um the next thing is i'm gonna uh put what am I adding up? Uh, I'll be adding up some stuff. So I put a B, a B, then uh, this to be looping through the main string. Now I'm looping through the main string and not the. Uh, and not the empty space. So you know that when I'm looping in and I'm putting strln, strl string underscore length, length like this, it's gonna be b and four. You know that length is four. if maybe I provide one, one zero zero, or like that nine that we did, we saw that the output is nine. So string here is what? nine but i don't want nine because actually in array i tell you that we don't start counting from number one two three four five we start counting from zero 
So because we start counting from zero, anybody that starts from zero, anybody that starts with one, you see the difference. When one is entering to what? Two. That time is zero is entering one. And when two is entering three, that is when um, 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 the other one is entering one. So for that, in that case, or in such case, we need to subtract it. So I put a subtraction sign, subtract it by one. So it's going to be three. Or it's going to be, um, um, if it was nine, because it was nine, this in like one zero zero zero. So something like this, I have one zero zero zero. One, which is how many string? One, two, three, four, five. So if I put string minus one, that is going to be what? Um, that is going to be four. So here will not be z this place will not be zero. So it's now be one, two, three, four in the array. So you get that line of code. So that's what it does. So now the next thing is. After doing that, the next thing is, if you do this, actually, um, you're going to be adding up some bunch of stuff that you don't understand. But what I want to do is, I'm going to be subtracting this minus. Well, I'll explain this later on so you understand. Now, you know that this is looping through each value. This line of code here is looping through value now looping to each this of this value that is like um, for instance I provide like what I provided here uh, I provide one zero zero one like that as a value it's looping through each of these values zero one two three now what does this do here is this thing here is gonna check the string that anything that looks like zero in this string, I want you to remove it. The calculation we did, you remember, you remember, sorry for that. Let me remove that. So, like the calculation we did um, earlier, you remember that, let me reduce this. You remember that um, I said that we have, let me, do that again. So, see, I said we have one, right? One, zero, one. And we have one here, we have two, we have four, and we have eight. Hmm? Any place that has zero on it is cancelled, is pointless, is useless. The important part we are looking for is the ones that have one, because zero times two is going to give us what? Zero. So, we don't need it. So, this line here we have here, what you see here is removing anything that has to do with zero, then it's focusing more on this. You can see that. So it's going to focus more on the, listen, so one times one is going to give us one, uh, which is going to drop down as one. Uh, one times four is going to give us what, four. We've added to this other one, it's going to give us five. One times eight is going to give us what? One times eight is going to give us uh, eight. So if we add 8 plus 4 plus 1, um, I think that should give us um, 13. You can see that. So that is the difference. Or that's why this, yeah, this symbol is here. It's used to remove anything that is called 0. So hope you understand that. Now let's move further. Um, we'll come So, going further to um, other stuff we are discussing about. So, now we have looped through each string, maybe four times. We're subtracting it up to four times. Then, each string we are looping through each. Um, we are removing zero from it. Then, whatever the output is, um, we are going to multiply it with the base. So, whatever the output is, we are going to multiply it with the base. So I'm going to add this here so that we'll be able to multiply it with our base. You know, I tell you our base is always increasing in twos, in a multiple of two. So we have one. You know that I set the base here to what? One. If you can remember, here, base is what? Set to one. So I come over to this place and um, 
b string length minus 1 close that so we are subtracting that so whatever value we have there we are going to multiply it with our base like this so you can see that so i'll come here and let me just cover that so it looks neat so you can see that so i can end this here so this is what's going to be happening every time every time so let me explain this line again one more time um, so you get um, the whole concept of what is going on with that line of code so i'm going to escape and i'm going to put uh, wq like that so um now let me explain what is happening so let me clear this screen shirt clear good now i want to explain what is going on there now this is what is happening in there now for instance we have one zero one right now the first thing is going to do is going to loop this is the string you know that the x string length of this is going to be how many string length is going to be what string length is going to be three because this is value of three right that's what string length is going to be so we'll have it up there that string length is what three for this number we have here so now the next thing we're going to be doing is now that function that um the decimal that is adding up those numbers this is what happens um, is going to loop to each this thing um to be like this you can see b right so string length if you look at that function we have string length minus one so string length is what three minus one you get that string length is three minus one so three minus one is what um that is what two so b is what is b bracket two you can see that hmm? now this two is referring to which value is referring to the last value this array here is referring to the last value don't forget that um when talking about 101 this is what <coughs> This is 0, 1, and this is 2. You can see that. So whenever I, I put uh, B in bracket 0, it's going to give us 1, which is this one. If I put B in bracket, uh, sorry, in bracket 1, it's going to give me 0, sorry. It's going to give me zero which is this one and if i put b in bracket two it's going to give me one which is this one here so you get that that's what is happening now another trick again that we need to know is we have um one zero one now after that b or uh, whatever we have there which is two minus what minus zero string so we have that um sorry let me get rid of this we have that zero syntax there you can see that minus this zero syntax i have not written that well so let me do that in it so you understand so we have b two minus zero now it's coming over here two is two zero or one two is what the value of two there is not what is not one are you with me the value we have here um, is not zero so this cannot be removed do you understand what we have there is what what we have here is one so if here this block of line this block here stands for one so one minus this string is not possible this string minus this string is not possible even though it's possible one minus zero will give you what 
We'll still give you what? We'll give you one. You get that? We'll still give you one. They are not alike. So this string cannot subtract this string. So we end up having what? One as our outcome. Outcome. You get that? Then we're going to multiply it by what? At the first line or the first run, base is one. So it's going to multiply by one. You can see that. But as things goes on, we subtract b because at that end of the function, you see something like this. String length. String length. You will now see minus, minus. Hmm? Sorry. See something like string length, then minus, uh, minus, minus. Then you see this, like this. String length, minus, minus. So, you encounter that. Now, when it reached that place where you see string length minus minus it has subtracted what string length so string length here is no more is no more three again as it's supposed to be like this so string length is going to what reduce to what two so string length is now two so you will now go over again and loop again and check string length is no more what three based on the count of this now string length is what is now 2. So when you put it inside the while function, which is the while loop, and it starts running, it comes again inside here. So when it comes again inside here, what happens? Let me show you again. Now the first outcome we have is 1. So we keep 1 in a separate place. So we know that we're going to be adding it next time again. Now what happens is it's going to come again. String length is no more 3 as before. Now, string length is now 2. Hmm? So, you now put 2 there. Minus 1. Can you see that? So, string length minus 1 minus that sign. That's 0 sign. You can see what is happening now. Now, at this 0 sign, what happened here is, B in this array you have what? 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is what? 1. So, we now have B array 1 minus the symbol. You can see that. Hmm? So, we now have what? B array 1 stands for what? I tell you that this is what? Get rid of this. So, this stands for 0 and this stands for 1 and this stands for 2. So, this is what is pointing at. It's pointing at 0. Automatically, we have what? Zero. So we have zero minus this zero here. You can see that. You can see the zero we have, zero minus that symbol we have there, which is true. They can subtract each other, which is going to give us what? Zero. And when you multiply it with the base, at this time around, base have increased inside because we use base. Base will be up to like power of two. So base have increased itself to two. So base will now be what? Times two. And 0 times 2 is what? Still 0. You can see that. So it adds up to nothing. We keep on like that loop till we reach the fourth where um, the while loop is now what? While loop is now 0. Reach a point where while loop, while loop is 0. I hope you understand. Now, let's continue um, where we stop. Okay. Uh, I'm going to minimize and come back so that's it so i'm just gonna hit enter so we are back to our coding base now you see that what we have been explaining all through so if for instance i provide true it's gonna count the length which is whether four or whatever so actually this need a lot of thinking and calculation on how to solve complex problem using code not just using arithmetic um, approach in it but because I know the arithmetic approach is very simple um, I will also show you how we can solve is using arithmetic approach um, in this thing and I think that's not gonna waste much time like this one but you also see that because I'm gonna add that as part of the course in C programming so now whatever this line each value 
and it multiplies with the base. But what happens to the base? The base is always multiplied by 2. So I'll come over here in set mode and I'll be multiplying the base by 2. So I'll say base, uh, I can say base times equals to, is equals to 2. Like that. So, like that. Good. Now, it's still the same thing as me saying base uh, is equal to uh, base, which is still 1, times 2. But this kind of waste of time. So, we don't need that. It's very long, but this is very short to write. So, just make sure you, you know that. So now this is um, highly set out. So now the next thing we are going to do is whenever we are done with this while loop, what I want to happen inside this function that is true is to return. At that time we return um, the string length. Now we are returning the decimal because it has added up. So I'm going to return the decimal. So return. Return. return so it's no more this thing i'm returning decimal which is the total adding up of everything it has done so please i know you guys have learned a lot and um if you really enjoy this and you want me to keep on with this act of kindness or uh, this act of sharing knowledge uh going through deep details and explanation like this please um, don't forget to leave the thumbs up and smash the like button and also uh, a, smash the like button leave a thumbs up they are the same thing right yeah thumbs up like button um, and also subscribe because that's very important so now this time around we're going to be testing that with this code we have done uh, let's see what's going to happen so I'm going to escape that and I'm going to WQ like that. Then I'm going to GCC the output to see what we got. So doom and it will say uh, um, um, I want to check our code like that and hit enter you see we have 217 so we want to test to see if this our code is working like fine it's working fine we want to see if it works fine so <clears throat> so you see um, I come to my print F so I don't want to be putting this let me put a B there because I can be putting a bunch of stuff there um, I'm actually receiving a character so I can just scan F like that And come inside here and put 1000. Zero, zero, zero. So this should be 8 in decimal. This should be 8 in decimal. You can use your scan F to type it manually, but I don't have time for that. We're going to be doing that in our next and that because time is well, gone <laughs> based on explanation. So A dot out. So just uh, hit enter. Sorry, I've not compiled that. Let me compile that. GCC. Oh, I think. Okay. Mm. Let me rectify that. Um. B. So.
let me try a single to see if that works <laughs> because this single and double everything is always complicated oh sorry yeah it works it works oh. let me undo that okay uh, I, I haven't declared my B that's why it's like that so uh, I need to do this const uh, uh, char then star B like that and hit that and we are good to go so we expect to have it as our output for that gcc okay a dot out and see we have it there our output you can go and play around with other um stuff there i can go and add one here which is gonna be nine i put replace with one like that and escape and i run that uh gcc that and i expect to have nine um v binary to number right a dot out see we have nine there so let me try with something that is not correct let me try it with a wrong um value or provide a wrong value to that so if for instance i provide um v binary or uh, i provide something like two So like that and I want to run that so I do GCC a dot out uh, okay it compiles then I do that see it returns zero because binary is not in or uh, you can find binary as two or three so it ends up returning zero you can see that if I return, uh, maybe I add a letter to it, I place that with a Q, and I escape, and I save that, and GCC it, and run it, you still have zero. So you can see, our code works perfectly, and it works fine. So uh, please, uh, once again don't forget to like and subscribe smash the like button and have a nice day yeah